Bismillah, in the name of Allah. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. What's your name? My uh, government name is Kenneth Lassiter, but my Islamic name is Muhammad Mujahid Ali Ibn Bilal. Wow, that's long. What, do, what is the meaning of that? Why people, like should people, when they come to Islam, should they change their name, identity, and these things? Well, to my understanding, it's not necessary for a person to change their name when they come to Islam. Uh, but I adopted a Islamic name basically because I wanted to try to live up to the attributes of my name. You know, so Muhammad... Uh, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He's the best example. And his right hand man was Ali, Rali Allahu Anham. And one of the, uh, one of his best uh, companions. Yeah, one of his best companions. And uh Ibn Bilal, my son name is Bilal. I should say Abu Bilal, not mm. Ibn Bilal. My son's so name did you, is did you come from a Muslim family? No. I come from a, a Christian family. Uh, okay, so Islam was a choice for you. You choose to do to to accept Islam, right? Well, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that we were all born Muslims. Only our parents teach us different. Right, so, right. I mean, you reverted to Islam. So I reverted. Yes, I went back home, so to speak, to Islam. Okay, so you're referring to the the text that we are all born Muslims, and in the sense of we are all being on the pure nature that God, Allah, created us on, and that is the very meaning of Islam: yes. submission to God, surrender to yes. the will of, of God, Allah. Yes. Uh, okay. Do you have any? Sh how how long have you been Muslim? Twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah. That's beautiful. Inshallah. So, uh, do you have any like special story about that? Yeah. Um. Back in, I guess it was 1990, 1991, I uh, had an experience uh, right after the first time <clears throat> these people, some people tried to uh, bomb the World Trade Center the first time, uh, I became interested in Islam, not so much because I was wanting to change my religion. That was 1993, I guess. It was 1993. Mm. One of those years, um, around that time, I, I, I went through a, a questioning of myself and my faith. And I just remember that was one of the landmarks in time, the World Trade Center bombing. And I went to this mosque. It was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And um, it was like the day after the bombing. And uh, some brothers, they're my brothers today, they... Uh, stopped me from going into the mosque. You know, I had long dreadlocks at the time, and I guess I didn't fit the profile of a, of a Muslim, and they asked me, was I Muslim? And I said, no, but I want to learn something about Islam. And uh, they told me it probably wouldn't be a good day for me to come. And uh, I was very upset behind that whole experience. Um, I'm a hunter as well, and I decided to go hunting. You are a hunter? <clears throat> yes. Hunter. Oh, good. I like to hunt deer and turkey. <laughs> and... Uh, so I went out to the high desert of uh, New Mexico, maybe about 50 miles from where I live at. And Excuse me, without interruption, I thought you are a, a professor, college professor. Yes, I, I, too, I, I teach audio engineering at Northern Virginia Community College. You teach audio engineering? Yes. That's beautiful. And you are a hunter at the same time? Yes. <laughs> Our special guest I have today, <laughs> mashallah, beautiful. So go ahead, you, what did you do with the other the, these guys who stopped you from... Well, I, like I said, I was upset. Not so much like a belligerent upset, but more like a frustration inside of my heart. And uh, I decided to go hunting that day um, just to relax. And it was about 50 miles outside of where I live in the middle of nowhere, really. And I hunted all day. I didn't get anything. But on the way back to town, I saw this old VW van, kind of like a 60s era camper van, um, parked on the side of the road. With my assumption was that it was broken down. And I kept riding, maybe about 10 miles. And I saw these, at the time my mindset was uh, strange looking fellows. Uh, they had on robes and thoves and the shoes that turn up and curl up in the front, and they was, it was about Mysterious five. guys. Yeah, you know, so I pulled over, 
And uh, I asked them, you know, was it their band that I passed a few miles back? And they said yes. And I asked them, well, do you need a ride in town? I'm assuming it just broke down. And they were like, no. And I was like, well. That wasn't the desert? Yes. And Why are they away from their van? Well, I got to talking to them a little bit and informed them that, you know, it's very hot right now. But when the sun goes down, it will be, if it wasn't freezing, it'd be close to freezing. So they might mm -hmm. want to get to where they were going. And they told me that their van wasn't broken down and the conversation led it wasn't to, no it was not broken down the conversation moved on to they were from pakistan and they had left their houses and their wives and children for a year that's 12 months to oh. walk from new york city to denver colorado to tell people about, to walk you said to walk yes walk from new york city to on denver foot. on foot yes why <laughs> to tell people about islam Okay. And, you know, it was just a strange coincidence that all of it came together around that whole time. And so I said to them, you know what I mean, you left your house and your wives and your children to walk from New York City to Denver, Colorado to tell me something. I should listen. I should listen to this. I, matter of fact, I got to hear what you have to say. So... uh they invited me back to their camp. They, uh, a rancher had allowed that me. That was the same day you uh, you tried to go to the masjid? Yes, the same wow. day. That's... To the best of my recollection, yes, it was the same day. And what happened is this rancher had let them set up a camp on his property. And so I went back with them, and it was dark by the time we got there. And at that time, they made uh what I unbeknownst to me at the time was Salat to Margaret was, was the sunset prayer. And after the prayer, um, they made me dinner. Uh, but let me describe to you the, the scene. They had a Bedouin tent. It was rather large at that. And once you went inside, it was just like being in an apartment. Had a stove, had rugs on the floor. It was very warm, well lit. Had I don't know what power source they had. Maybe had a generator or something. Been so long, but I do remember quite distinctly that it had lights. Mm -hmm. And they sat down and started telling me about Islam, making dawah to me. And five minutes, I, w I had embraced Islam. Yeah. It, it touched me <laughs> to my heart. I could feel it. And uh, Do you remember anything of what they, they told you that day? In yes. five minutes, like you, you were ready to accept it. Yes, it was. Revert. But besides the beauty of the brother's talk, I remember the brother's name was Yahya. I remember his, the one that was talking, his name was Yahya, which I later... Uh, found out that was yeah, John, 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 that H, John the yeah. Baptist's name, and uh, he described. He well, first of all, he asked me that I believe in heaven and I believe in one God, and yes, I had already my. So Muslims believe in John, believe in Yahya, yes, as a prophet, as a messenger. It's, it, it, of course we do, and the speech was. He asked me a few questions to see where I was, I guess, religious-wise, which I believed in monotheism anyway, and I did believe in a judgment day and, and a heaven and a hell. So he immediately started talking about the paradise, and he told me that in paradise, if I saw a bird flying, that I, and I wanted to see what that bird tasted like, I could just <laughs> grab the bird and it would be on my plate, and then I could eat it, and... Uncooked? Uh, well, it would be a dish, and then I could eat it, and then the, Cooked, you know, really? when I finished with it, then the bird would come back out of the bones, and it would fly <laughs> away. And it's, I don't know if I'm telling the story exactly right, but I just remember the beauty of, of that story, and the, it was very vivid picture of the paradise from his tongue. And mm. it was just what I was looking for, you know, the monotheism. You know, I always believed that God was one I guess you were hungry That's yes. all you got, I, you I got was it thirsty and hungry for the truth <laughs> and uh, I didn't really believe that not only for the truth for the birds <laughs> yeah for the birds you know I love to yeah, eat yeah. so he really I guess he picked up on that and uh, I always believed that I didn't need an attorney on judgment day you know no one to stand for me I always believed in my heart that I could talk to God myself I didn't need to go through anybody no intercession and uh I took to Islam immediately, immediately, Beautiful. and uh, they 
took me the next day. I spent the night with them, and they took me the next day to the very mosque that I was barred from entry. Mm. 